Hi, I'm Vinny. I just made this ukulele for my nephew Judd, and I'm gonna show you how I did it. I made the top and bottom of the body from 1 8 inch plywood. Thinner plywood would probably be better musically, but this ukulele is for a three year old, so some extra robustness is beneficial. I made the sides of the body from 1 quarter by 3 inch red oak from the Big Box Home Center. I cut this red oak into eight pieces. Two pieces were six and a half inches long. Two pieces were three and a half inches long. And four pieces were cut with 45 degree miters on both ends and were one and three quarters inches on their longest edge. I printed out two copies of a template I made on the computer and used spray adhesive to stick these templates to the plywood. Then I used a bandsaw to cut out those top and bottom pieces. I made sure to leave a little extra around the edges. It's better that these pieces are too big than too small. The extra can be sanded down later. I drilled a one and three quarter inch sound hole into the top piece, the soundboard. The size of this hole was based on the Hemholtz resonance. There's a link in the description to more information. To minimize blowout, I only drilled part way through, then flipped the board and finished the hole on the other side. At this point, I was done with the templates, so I peeled them off. Then I glued the side pieces onto the bottom board. I didn't have quite enough clamps, so I did the glue up in two rounds. When the glue was dry, I sanded the top edges with 60 grit sandpaper to make sure they were level. And then glued on the soundboard. When the body was completely dry, I used a sanding disc on my homemade drill powered lathe to sand around the sides to get all the faces level and smooth. I also rounded over all the edges to give the body a better feel. Then I hand sanded down to 300 grit to get it nice and smooth. I made the neck from a hunk of white oak I got from a hardwood dealer. It was one and three quarter inches by two and a half inches. Alternatively, you could easily glue together thinner strips of like red oak that you can get at the home center. I made some templates of the side and top of the neck on the computer and printed those out. I attached them to the white oak with some spray adhesive. All the templates I used for this project can be downloaded for free, link in the description. I cut out the side profile first, then temporarily glued all the pieces back together using hot glue, and then cut out the top profile. The hot glue pieces came apart fairly easily to reveal the rough shape of the neck. I taped another copy of the template onto the head so I could mark the locations of the tuning pegs. And I drilled 5 16 inch holes at these locations. My template has markings for the frets and I used a miter saw to carefully cut shallow grooves at these spots. Fret positions are critical to getting a good sounding instrument so it's important to get these right. Then I used a hand saw to cut a notch for the nut. I used a straight file to make sure the groove was straight then use a round file to shape the groove to match my nut and make sure the nut would sit at the proper height. I used a quarter inch bolt as the nut, which is not the traditional way, but it is sometimes done with cigar box instruments. I've done this before and it does work. I marked the center of the neck on the back side just as a rough reference. And then shaped the neck. I did a lot of the general shaping with a Stanley Surform tool but also used sanding drums on a rotary tool. I just freeformed the shape, trying to get something that was comfortable in my hands. And of course, there was a lot of hand sanding too. I flattened the end of the neck with 60 grit sandpaper. I angled it ever so slightly so that the nut end of the neck would be angled down just a bit compared to the part that attaches to the body. Then I sanded the spot on the body where the neck would attach with 60 grit sandpaper to give the glue something to hold on to. Then I glued the neck to the body and left a little bit of the neck sticking above the body. 
A traditional fretboard would sit above the body like this. I wouldn't do a simple butt joint like this on anything larger than a ukulele, but the strings of a ukulele don't exert much force on this joint, and I've done it like this before without an issue, but there's still some risk with using a weak joint like this, just so you know. When the glue is dried, I use a wood burning tool to mark the 5th, 7th, and 10th frets. I use 2 inch finishing nails as frets, which were cut to size with a small bolt cutter. These were glued into place with a two part epoxy. When the epoxy had cured, I cleaned up and rounded over the ends of the fret with a flat file. I made a saddle from a scrap piece of walnut. I have a template for my saddle design, but I found it easier to transfer the measurements to the wood with a pencil instead of gluing on a paper template. You want to use a dense wood for the saddle because a dense wood should transfer the vibrations from the strings to the soundboard better than a less dense wood will. I started the groove where the bridge sits with a triangle file and then shaped it with a round file like I did for the nut. I drilled four 1 16th inch holes into the back of the saddle to hold the string. Then sanded the saddle down to 300 grit. The nut and bridge were both made from a 1 quarter inch by 20 stainless steel bolt that I cut and grinded using a rotary tool. It's not that hard to make these out of bone or very hard wood, and those materials will probably sound better. But this is a homemade instrument for a three-year-old, and I like the durable, rustic look that comes from using bolts. I marked 13 and 5 8 inches from the center of the nut, and this is where the center of the bridge should sit. It's very important to get this position just right. I glued the saddle to the top of the body with wood glue and let it dry. Then I glued the nut and bridge into place with epoxy, just like I did with the frets. I used high gloss tongue oil finish to finish all the wood. I applied eight coats, letting each dry for about 12 hours before sanding with quadruple aught steel wool and reapplying. Tongue oil finish gets a bad rap from some people because it rarely contains any real tongue oil, but it's actually a good finish if you just ignore the naming issues. I press the tuning peg inserts into the holes in the head and mark the position of the tuning peg screws and drill tiny pilot holes for the screws. Then I installed the tuning pegs, and added some strings, once I tuned it up, the ukulele was ready to play. I like the way the ukulele turned out. I think it looks good. It sounds pretty good. It's a little quiet and the tone is a little thin, but I was kind of expecting that. To improve on that, you'd want to make the body a little deeper. But overall, I'm happy with the way it turned out. I think Judd will like it. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to keep up to date with my newest videos. Thanks for watching. No outtakes this time, but uh, got a little bonus track for you. I'm going to compare the homemade ukulele to a professionally built one. This is a Lenakai OU21, which is a very affordable, pretty good entry level ukulele. So let's play this one first, real quick.
Now the homemade one. There you go.